Hi, this video is guidance for Criterion B strand one of the DTIA. And in this video, we're gonna help you understand how to develop feasible ideas to meet appropriate specifications and explore solutions to the problem. To start out with, there's no extended writing in this particular strand. It's all images and annotations, and you have about six pages to work with. So as you explore solutions to the problem, you should engage in something called divergent thinking, which is to develop a range of distinct ideas or different ways to solve the problem that are different from each other. This is where you actually want to have many different ideas, and you shouldn't be really too worried about the fact that some of the ideas might be a little bit wild. Um, that's okay. I mean, they do need to meet the design specifications still, but they can be kind of out there and, and you really want to think differently at this point and try to have many different ways to solve the problem. Um, you're going to be thinking in this divergent way, develop the solution with the mindset that there are unlimited possibilities to create ideas. And you should generate as many ideas as possible to create choices that develop your design further. I want you to think of this like a funnel. So if I think about the sort of design funnel, at the top, I have lots of different ideas and they diverge from each other. And what we want to do is engage in a process of convergence after this. And I'll explain this more further, but essentially you want to combine your ideas, iterate your ideas based on the feedback that you're getting from your clients or your uh, users and come up with one idea. So you're narrowing and converging your ideas until you just have one left. So once you've generated a number of choices, you can start to eliminate some of the ideas that you've generated. So for instance, you can consider ones that are not as feasible and, and eliminate those. You can get rid of ones that don't fully meet the design specification and get rid of those. And this is when you're engaging this idea of convergent thinking. As a reminder, through this whole process, you need to involve the user in these decisions. You need to be gathering feedback from them. So convergent thinking is when your ideas are coming together. And so this is when you're starting to make choices based on the requirements of the design specifications, and you're gonna refine your ideas further and develop them to meet those requirements better and better. And again, I'm gonna repeat this and I'm sorry, but based on user feedback. So as you develop your ideas, you should be following an iterative design methodology as you refine your ideas to meet the aspects of the design specification. So an iteration is a version of something. So you are creating new and better versions of your ideas, and you're going to develop this guided through feedback generated by drawings and ideas and models with clients and users. So you need to get that feedback from your clients and users. From the analysis of that feedback, you should be gaining insights that drive the development of your ideas forward. The iterative design development also needs to demonstrate a logical flow. So we should be able to track how an original idea at the, say the top of the funnel becomes changed, how the iterations have changed over time and shows the development of those iterations based on feedback. And one of the best ways to do this is color coding, which I'll show you an example of later. So not only do you need to reference feedback, you also need to reference your design specifications. And they need to be considered throughout the design development process and while you're refining your ideas to develop ergonomic function and aesthetic, uh, aesthetics and so on. You're gonna focus on designing to meet the specifications. It's the specifications that are driving the work forward and focusing you on solving the problem. So the very best work on Criterion B is gonna demonstrate insight and originality. It's gonna display innovative ideas that are presented using selection of appropriate techniques and focused annotations. Here's a list of appropriate techniques for developing ideas and exploring solutions to the problem. And they're not limited to this list, but you know this is pretty comprehensive. So freehand drawings and sketching, and I would use these for your initial design ideas, formal drawing techniques such as isometric and perspective drawing, mixed media, 
CAD, pictorial drawings, cross-sectional views, exploded drawings, assembly drawings, tests or experiments. When presenting your ideas, you need to use appropriate techniques and annotations. You need to ensure that all images are of good quality, that they're scanned or photographed images that are clearly visible on the screen. You may need to also adjust brightness or contrast when necessary to ensure that all the images that you have in your IA can be seen in their entirety. When annotating your design drawings or diagrams, you need to articulate your design thinking by highlighting key features of an idea, developments made to the design, so the why the change in the design was made, and referencing design specifications as a means of driving the design development. Again, user feedback is vital. You should document the meaningful decisions showing the consideration of form over function or form and function, your divergent and convergent thinking, and any sort of radical or incremental approach that you used in your design. At this stage in Criterion B, you may also undertake additional research required to inform the development of your ideas. You need to be aware that you do not need to include all of the research or raw data, but just annotate your key findings from any additional research that you undertake. Ensure that the annotations are legible and concise using appropriate terminology and conventions. So as part of your convergent thinking, you need to ensure that your ideas are feasible in terms of solving the problems. They need to follow the specifications. There needs to be a possibility of manufacture in the facilities that you have access to, and the materials and resources need to be available. You need to consider environmental impact, originality, relative advantage, and complexity and compatibility. You should not use existing solutions and just make basic changes to improve their functionality or form. In this section, you should only include annotations that are 10 words or fewer. Extended writing or explanations of ideas in narrative or concept development process must not be used. You cannot have any extended writing. If annotations of more than 10 words or extended writing is used, it's going to tr contribute to the overall word count. You need to refer to the notes on annotations in the formatting the design project report section of the guidance. So it's important to note that the development of ideas in strand one should be concurrent with the use of concept modeling in strand two, and the evidence of both may be integrated. This is an example of a high performing example of strand B1. And you'll notice that there's a lot of divergent ideas here. There's a lot of sketching and um, you'll notice that there are design specifications that are labeled on the actual drawings in red and in green to show whether they've been met or not. An area in which I think this could be improved, however, would be in the flow of the ideas. It's difficult to tell where one idea begins and one idea ends. They're not labeled very well. And I also think that labeling uh, your design ideas with feedback is also a great way to show the development of your product. This is an example of how you can label your design ideas to show the development. So first things first, we've used that color coding scheme where green denotes meeting the specification, red shows that it's not meeting, the blue shows which design specification specifically we're talking about, and then we've got the pink here that shows target market feedback. This particular example also shows a figure number and it's labeled as design idea one. Going back to the example, you can see that this student has also done a really good job of doing some concept models. They've taken some physical models and looked at how those work. Um, and they've also you know, labeled them much better in this area. And they're testing them and experimenting to see if they actually work. And this is an important part of the process. At some point towards the end of your initial design ideas and iteration process, it's a good idea to develop some sort of evaluation table that shows the design specifications and a rating system to show which of your ideas are meeting 
the design specifications the best. This is just an example. I think I would have added a title to this table to help it be better, but it's just a quick example of what you might consider doing. This is another example of an evaluation table that you might use. You can see that it considers client feedback, expert appraisal, possibility of manufacturing, cost, et cetera, et cetera. This is an example of a student who has a medium performance on this section of the IA. And you can see that they're referencing the design specifications. And that's what the, the colors around the colored boxes around the annotations mean. They are also iterating and have lots of ideas. So that's all good. They have some CAD drawings as well as hand drawn, which are also good. But there's little evidence that there's any sort of user feedback involved in this. And also there's little evidence about whether the designs meet the specifications or not. The IB does not provide an example of a low performance.